morning. It's us again. I hope you're not disappointed to see these faces on your scroll, but we just want to invite you and encourage you. Uh, it is a continuing in our series uh, about knowing God. And today we talk about the relationship. Uh, last week we talked about who God is, but now it's the relationship he wants to have with us because you find out a lot about a person when you enter into a relationship with them. So we're going to talk about what the relationship is, how it should look, what relationship God wants to have with us. Yes, and there's still time to join us. We're at 8169 Regent Parkway here in Fort Mill, South Carolina. Hope to see you here. All right, we're going to go on out. So here we go. Now I'm going to turn this camera. Hey, Shabari. All right.
more than a sufficient. It's more than sufficient. It's over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. So sometimes just one word from the Lord can change us. The fact that I know God loves me and I know He loves you. And what you did yesterday, what you did today, what you may do tomorrow does not stop his love. So we can get that into our hearts and our souls. That God loves us more than anything. <laughs> we love Jesus. We worship and
Lord tells me one thing, I will remain confident that I believe in the word of the Lord. Amen. In the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you 
it shall be for me. Lord, they can't come for you. I got your back. 
And then. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Peter got missing. And I don't know if you've ever been in a relationship with somebody and the chips fell and they got missing. Uh -huh. Perhaps if you're honest, you got missing. <laughs> he said, this is a little bit too much for me. I didn't sign up for all this. I'll ride, but I'm going to die. <laughs> right? <laughs> but what does God want to tell us about a relationship with him? Mm -hmm. So let's, let's, let's look at it. So, uh, in our in our text, we go to uh, 26 verse, and we find that God has created everything. God has let man know that everything begins and ends with Him. In the beginning, God, uh -huh. and you can translate that because God is love. In the beginning, love, yeah. and so once you start with love, has a greater chance of being successful. If you start a diet. Hating your body, it probably won't work. Yeah. Yeah. If you hate a job, if you start a job and you hate to get up in the morning and go to it, you probably won't last there very long. Yeah. But what you start with love works. What you start with love lasts. And so that's what we found out. That's what we found out last week. And so now we get into it, and God says, now let me connect with you. Let me relate with you so you can really get to know me. And the Bible says that, then God said, let us yeah. make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion. Now, we found out last week that everybody was present who needed to be present. Yeah. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Yeah. The Father, the Creator, the Holy Ghost moved upon the waters. And Jesus was the Word. Because in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Yeah. And then the word became flesh. And so everybody is there. And God has created the animals and everything else. But then he stops. And he says, let us create man in our own image. You see, for everything else before then, he spoke to the earth. But when he came to create man, he spoke to himself. He said, because this right here, this is special. This right here, this has to stop everything. Yeah. I don't want this to come out of the earth. I want this to come out of me. Yeah. I want this to be able to relate and connect yeah. to me. Yeah. So God says, let us oh, yeah. get together. Let us uh -huh. have a conversation. Because if you go back to the other scriptures, he said everything he made, every animal he made, he made it to seek after its own kind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. He said, I don't want this seeking after nothing on earth. I'm saying He didn't want Man seeking after things on earth. Yeah, yeah. He said, I want man to seek after me. Yeah. So I'm going to make me the very essence of him. Yeah. So he said, let us get together. The other reason why he did this is he said, because everything else got something to relate to yeah. except me. All right. All right. See, God's got a heart. Yeah. And I know we make God into fire and brimstone striking everybody down, but God says, I need something that can understand me. I need something that can get on the same page with me. I need something that can understand the power that I have and have similar power. He said, I need to talk to me. And I, cause, cause that's a, I mean, let's break it down. Those of you who have, who have kids, it has it intentionally, right? We was complaining it to The dog is acting that way, but the Lord is still a yeah. Somebody say amen. amen. But those of us who sat down and said, let's have a child, why did you have that child? Because you wanted to see you in that child. Yeah. 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 Right? You wanted to, a part of you to be in that child. Why? When, remember when you were pregnant? Oh, hey, hey. oh. I wonder who going to look like. I hope you got mine. I hope you got mine. And you began to divide parts that you wanted that child to have because you wanted to see a better version, actually, of you in that child. Ooh, I just thought about that. That's why Christ said, greater works than these yeah. will yeah. yeah. That's like any good, good parent. I want to see a better version of me yeah. in my yeah. child. Yeah. I know they're going to have to go through some stuff. I know it's going to have to be some training. But I want to see me yeah. in that child. Amen. Amen. See, here's the thing. God wants 
people to see him in us. All right. That's heavy. Yes, yes. God said, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't care. I don't care uh, about your title. I don't care about your money. I don't, God said, I ain't concerned if you're smart or good looking. I don't care about any of that. But when they see you, they ought to see me. When they walk with you, they ought to feel like they're walking with me. Because you can't really help them. But if they can see me, maybe they'll call out to me and they'll know me like you know me. Yeah. Yeah. And so anything that is a distraction from them seeing me in you, mm. I don't want it. All right. All right. And I'll be honest, that prayer changed my life. Yeah. I began praying that several years ago. I said, God, just let people see you in me. Yeah. And what I love is God takes over, and it happens just accidentally sometimes. All right. Sometimes, y'all y'all been there, you were not trying to be holy, or, you know, you were not trying to be anointed. You, you were just saying what God put on your heart, and then I see God all over you. And you're like, so thank you. But you didn't try to do that. That's right. Think about it. Think about it. So God makes this a goal. There's a there's there's a there's a, there's a, 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 a work psychologist y'all know Stephen Covey. He says he says you should ask yourself what will success look like. You should ask yourself um, uh, what will it look like in the end before you start everything. Uh -huh. Begin with the end in mind. He yeah. says. Yeah. So wait a minute. If success is people seeing God. How does that change everything you do? Amen. Here's what I mean. It'll change your work. Why? Because can't nobody see God if you're mad at work? You don't want to be there. You don't think you make enough. You don't think you make a difference. So if you really want people to see God, you do what God told you to do. Amen. So he can be seen. Amen. Now, here's the part. Because some of y'all scared. I see it. Here's the part. God says, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men to me. What that means is I'll draw men who pay you more. Yeah. I'll draw yeah. people who give you a better title. Oh, yeah. Most of all, yeah. I'll give you a peace so that you can go to sleep at night yeah. and not worry about going to work the next morning. Some of y'all don't like Sunday. It ain't because church run long. It's because you have to think about Monday. Yeah. And you can't stand that job. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah. Well, it would even change, it would even change, it would even change the, the it would change the work you do. You know, it would change the person you marry. All right. Y'all stuck, stay with it. Yeah. <laughs> but my point is, <laughs> but my point is, if success was people seeing love, then you would find somebody for which you can build a loving relationship. Yeah. Not somebody who will make babies with good hair. Not, 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 not somebody who you can build the empire like Lucius and Cookie. You will marry someone for whom when the two of you are together, there's a vision of the love of God. It changes everything. All right. If success were people seeing love, it changes the way we eat. Yeah. We're gonna get to that later, but you would you, you you would you would say I need to be vibrant, I need to smile, I don't need to eat this cheesecake and I'm lactose intolerant and I can't stand and talk to nobody because I gotta run to the bathroom. It would change. I got to be ready for God to use me, so I gotta take care of this stuff. Yeah. All right. I got five hand claps. That's okay. We coming back to it. Coming back to it. And so then God said, let us make man in our image. That's the first part. He says, let us make man in our image. When you look this up, because we've been confused over the years, when you look this up, the word is actually imagination. Because God is love and God is the spirit and those things don't have bodies. So God says, he can't function, she, he and she can't function on earth as spirits yeah. because I've got some other work for them to do. Yeah. Yeah. So what he says is, let's sit down mm -hmm. and let's imagine something. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Let's create something totally different. Like let's make a whole new blueprint. Yeah. And I don't want to make it like the animals. That's right. and, I'm, and let me go to some, some of you scientists. 
Because I know some of y'all say, y'all have learned, y'all went to college, you learned it, and y'all have learned that man's DNA is 98% like animals. Well, God, yeah, you using the same material, but the purpose is very different. A, a bridge is made of steel and so is a car, but they do two different things. So don't, get, don't let science trick you. God said it's the purpose that counts. It's what the reason that I created them, that's what counts. So he sits down, so he sits down, and he says, well, let's make man out of all imagination. He says, okay, all right. The three of them sitting there, he says, okay. Um, he needs to be totally different. Um, he needs to uh, have a design that just don't make sense to people. Huh. Yeah. He has to have a design that is totally unique. He has to have a design that man will try to recreate and, and clone, but he just can't get it right. Yeah. It'll be missing my soul and my essence. He says, but I need them to know that it's I who is the creator. Yeah. It is yeah. I who has mystery that you don't understand. Yeah. Doctors will tell you they only know a small percentage about really how the body works. Right. He says, let me make something totally unique. And that's why, that's why David said, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Yes. Yes. And that word, and that fearfully means that means awe. So when we hear in the Bible that we ought to fear God, it means we ought to be in awe of God. Uh -huh. He's a good father. He don't want you fearing him out of pain and punishment. That's a misunderstanding. So he says, and what we need to understand is God wants us to confidently Embrace our unique. Amen. Meaning he made you the way he made you for a reason. Amen. Every curve, how, how tall you are, how small, everything about you is made on purpose, for a purpose, Amen. it is intentional. Amen. So stop trying to look like somebody else. Amen. Stop trying to reshape what God made. Yes. God made yes. you unique. He said these need to be so unique that they love their uniqueness. Love the color of your eyes and, and, and how your hair curls up. God said, I need you to love that. I need you to be confident in that. Why? Because the world will try to take so much from you. Yeah. At least know that the suit you woke up in is tailor-made yeah. and can't nobody duplicate it. Yeah. You ain't broken. You ain't flawed. Yeah. You are made the way you are. Why? Because there's going to come a moment mm -hmm. that only somebody who looks like you can break through that wall of somebody else who needs to hear about God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Only some, and I know, I know that doesn't sound fair, but people tend to be carnal until they know God. Mm. So only somebody of your weight, only somebody of your skin color, only somebody who looks like you is going to be able to reach that person. Yeah. They'll be open to just the outside of you. Amen. And if that's how God has to come through, well, then thank you very much. Amen. He'll do it. Be confident in your uniqueness. Love who you are. Yeah. It doesn't matter if everybody don't get with it. All right. Man's rejection equals God's selection. Yeah. 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 Right. Love who you are. Because I'm going to make these very unique. And here's what I believe. Because we, we messed this thing up. I believe that what God did was he said, let me make man different from the animals. So that man would, would, would come together and say, look at us, we're different than them. Uh, we have some abilities they don't have, so maybe God wants us to take care of all this stuff. Because we have some abilities they don't have. But what we did is we looked at each other. Yeah. And we said, you are different from me. Uh -huh. Your skin color is different, I don't like it. I don't know why I don't like it, just because of skin color, but I don't like you. And I don't like you over here, y'all be the tall ones over here, y'all the short ones over there. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And we took what God made to bring us together. Uh -huh. In uniqueness, uh -huh. and we use it to hate and divide uh -huh. one another. Uh -huh. But understand, God says, you are made this way because I place a responsibility on you yeah. Yeah. to yeah. love what I love. Amen. You get to that. Amen. And so then God says, our likeness. And when we look at likeness, it says it means thinking. Well, remember, God's thinking is love. Yeah. He says, I'm going to make them to want love. I'm going to make them. So that their fuel is love. I told you, you can exist in this world without love, but it's like a bird that chooses to walk. You yeah. won't get very far, yeah. and you won't get very high. You won't get to where God really wants you to be Amen. if you don't allow yourself to love Amen. and be loved. Amen. But, 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 it, but it goes deeper. 
He says, he says, uh, he uses that word again. Mm -hmm. Y'all remember last week, that word let was the very first word God spoke. Uh -huh. yes. And in that word let, he released all power. Amen. Because let is a releasing yes. so that others can receive. Uh -huh. And God says, let them have the name. <laughs> when they get their minds right, huh? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> When they get their minds right, when they focus on love, uh -huh. then I'll give them some authority. Mm -hmm. yeah. when, they, when, 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 when they begin to come together and act like somebody, yeah. when they stop arguing over invisible lines in the sand, yeah. then, then, then I'll bless them. When they, when they begin to act like people who love each other and know that I've placed a responsibility in them, then I will bless them. Yes. Yeah. See, well, here, yeah, what's happening here is a transfer of authority. Mm -hmm. This is God saying, the earth is yours, and he bows to man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And says, now it's on you. All right. He says, take right. care of it. Yeah. And that's why I've heard you say a lot of times, is people are always asking, why won't God fix this? Mm -hmm. If there is a God, why are these people dying? Why are you letting them die? Yeah. 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 Because God is bound in this verse. This is big. In this verse, God says, we're going to let them have dominion. Mm -hmm. We're going to turn this over to them yeah. wow. in a loving mindset. Mm -hmm. Understand, authority comes with the responsibility to love what God loves yeah. the way God loves. Amen. Mm -hmm. You don't have no authority just because you have a title. Amen. You don't have no authority. You really don't have no authority uh, just because you got a little money in your pocket. Amen. That ain't authority. Amen. That ain't power. Yeah. You got no power until you can love someone to the point that they begin to see God. Amen. That's power. Yeah. When somebody who didn't believe now believes. Oh, yeah. uh, look at Jesus. His love was so overwhelming that those that didn't want to believe had to come yeah. crying and yielding. Saying, I love you and I want to follow yes. the Father. Amen. Amen. Can you do that? Mm. Yeah, you got a little money, you can hire somebody to do some stuff. But can you change your heart? Mm. 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 Only love can change a heart. Mm. Only love can change a heart. So this authority that God gives us, He said, I need you to love like I love. So then the Bible says, he gets down and creates. I don't know if y'all see this. So he had a conversation first. You see God's intentionality? Intentionality? He says, we, we, let's talk about this first. That's a lesson mm -hmm. to some, some couples and some business partners. Don't just go out and make the decisions. Amen. I don't care what the commercial says. Don't you bring a car back with a big bow on it. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Talk about how much you love. Amen. Some conversations need to be had. Some decisions Amen. that need to be made because there's a, there's a purpose bigger. Amen. 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 Somebody just got mad because I was like, see, y'all about to give me a call for Christmas past. Somebody else like, phew. <laughs> Put that back. All right? So he says this. He says, great man's own energy. In his own image, and in the image of God, he created male and female. Yeah. He created them. He created them. He's trying to make something that will seek after him. Mm -hmm. And he says, I need both male and female. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm in the likeness. But you can't get to God without another part. Mm -hmm. you, can't, you can't do it on your own. Amen. That's right. You know, you know Yes, you do bad all by yourself. <laughs> you can't do God's kind of good without someone who gives you the other part of God's perspective. God says it's going to take both of y'all to reach me. It's going to it's gonna, it's, it's gonna take, take both of y'all and me for you to reach me. And God says he, and he blessed both of them. And God explains why in the next chapter, but understand this. Some of us get a little chauvinistic, get a little feministic, and we don't understand that it takes both. That God made man and woman together to understand and reach him. 
And I know we got some pound my chest brothers who go on the head of this household. <laughs> but you need to understand there's some things that God is going to speak directly to her. Amen. Yeah. You won't yeah. hear it, but you are distracted, and you need to hear from her. Please don't get it. Don't get it. Don't get it mistaken. Yes, Pastor Jermaine is on the stationery and on the door, but you need to understand there's very few decisions I make without this woman's input. Yeah. And let me tell you. You don't want me making decisions without her input. <laughs> Let me tell you, I'll mess some stuff up. I will say some things. She'll be like, oh, maybe you really gonna say that? Maybe really? I don't know, maybe not. So you gotta understand that it takes both. If you if, if you work around all men, you have a problem. If you work around all women, yeah. things ain't gonna quite go right. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. God said, I need both perspectives. And I'm really being, I'm trying to be fully honest with you. There is no thing that you can do. I don't care if it's fixing the car. Um, you need the other part of that input. Because God is saying, I'm going to speak to both of you. And you might think I am he man do it all. But I need you to hear from her. And the same way with you, women. I need y'all to understand. Amen. I know, I know. <laughs> we can be hard here. <laughs> but he has a perspective on the world that happens to be dominated by men that you may not have. Let me say this too. It's going to be tricky. I might do some of y'all. <laughs> I am a fan of gender. Now, I know these things. You know. <laughs> but I am a fan of womankind. Yeah. There's something magical about womankind. <laughs> and there's something special about being a man. And God and nature made it that way for a reason. And if you don't feel like it fits you, that's between you and God. But I don't believe that God makes those kinds of mistakes. I believe that if there is a struggle you have in your gender, that is a moment of growth between you and God. And God wants you to come to him to work that out. Okay? I'm, please be clear. I'm not preaching hate. I'm not preaching rejection. If somebody is existing in that kind of confusion, we should embrace them all the more. But I'm just a firm believer in God knows what he's doing. Yeah. And I need y'all to understand, I don't always know what God is doing. I don't always get it. I don't always understand it. And even as pastor, I don't always agree with it. I say, God, why is this going on? Yeah. But usually when I have that conversation, God says, well, then what you going to do about it? Because less, you yeah. have that authority. <laughs> so I'm not trying to say you just let every injustice go. But in God's design of man and woman, I think he got it right. I think he got it right. I think there's a beautiful match and connection that comes when man and woman can come together. How do I know? Because the Bible says after he created them, the next verse says, then he blessed them. So what we find is man and woman, male and female, coming together on the same accord, on one page, not hating each other, not casting each other down, not saying all of my dogs, like not saying that, uh, that she gonna spend all your money. Once you get together in unity, there comes a blessing like no other. Yeah, yeah. Our greatest blessing comes from a unity in God. Yeah. Because I swear there's two or three gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst oh, yeah. of there's something about people getting together and saying, what does God have for us? Yeah. As a matter of fact, God will bless unity even if you're going in the wrong direction. Y'all yeah. have seen this. Just a messed up couple. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all know them. Don't look around. Look at you. <laughs> and it's caused you to ask yourself, what in the world are they doing? Yeah. But they keep getting blessed. 
Now then, there are other couples. He loved the Lord, she loved the Lord, but they can't get on the same page. And so God said, at least the couple on the same page is going in a direction. And I can redirect them to me. But the couple going like this, I can't do nothing with that. You're going this way and you're going that way. She wants this and he wants that. God said, until you come together, I can't give you vision. Until you come together, I can't give you direction. I don't care how holy you are. I don't care how much you read the Bible, how much you shout. But until you come together, I can't direct you. So I'll direct a couple together in their ignorance. Because they'll get to me eventually. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So then the Bible says, so remember God said, I want you to have dominion. And what people miss here is God gives us the steps for dominion in this verse. It ain't the art of war. It ain't the secret. The steps to dominion are right here. Look at what God does after he creates us. The first thing he does is he blesses us. Yeah. Ooh, wait a minute. Ain't done nothing yet. You begin with blessing. See, too many of us as parents, we say, after you do something, mm -hmm. after you bring home some grades, then I, you know. No, no, that's not how it works. That's not how God works it out with you, which is always weird. Like, we don't do stuff that God won't even do. Uh -huh. God blesses you first. The same way he did Jesus. The Bible says he blessed him. He said, this is my beloved son with, with whom I'm well pleased. He had done not one thing yet. He hadn't walked on any water. He hadn't turned any water to wine. And God said, no, I'm going to start this relationship with blessing you. Uh -huh. So the first thing when man and woman are created, and we don't know how long this is, but God said, I'm just going to spend some time blessing you. Uh -huh. You want to begin to get people to see stuff your way? Mm -hmm. Brothers and you want to begin? Start with a blessing. Yeah. <laughs> start with a blessing. I'm going to give you an example. Y'all not going to like it. You want him to take that trash out? Oh, baby, let me be muscle. <laughs> <laughs> you just alone. Oh, you just... So what you've been doing, you just, right? No, oh, see they smiling already. Just, just the thought of that, right? And, 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 and so this blessing spurs someone on to want to do something. Just, just begin to bless somebody. Just begin to pour into them the thought that they are good. Then the next thing he says to, he says to be. Fruitful. Now, let's, let's make this bigger than sex. Let us talk, be fruitful and multiply. Some of y'all are real good at it. Praise God. Whatever. But it says, well, let's make this a little bigger. A little bigger. God, when God says to be fruitful, he means that it can recreate itself. The best way for us to be, uh, be fruitful is to either invest or teach. So whatever God has given you, you need to be teaching someone else to do it. That's why a lot of families have lost wealth over the generations. Mothers didn't teach their daughters to cook. They didn't teach their husbands uh, how to maintain and, and how to work with their hands. Because we began to think, oh, it's probably better that I have a lot of degrees on my wall and, and wear suits every day. And so what we did is we stopped teaching. We stop multiplying. Yeah. It doesn't matter if they're not called to do that thing or not. It is a blessing that they know how to do it. Because if you pass it down to them and they choose something else, at least their children yeah. might. Because sometimes it skips a generation. Yeah. So, and so you got to teach. you got to pour into somebody else. That's why the next step is to multiply. That's how you multiply. How many people have you taught? How many people have you taken that gift and shared with somebody else and taught somebody else so that they can teach somebody else? Yeah. See, fruitfulness has to have a seed. The question God will ask you when you get ready to meet him on high is, how many seeds did you plant? Wow. Don't look at him all quizzically like, um, you know, I, I, you know, I work at a bank. So I, <laughs> no. You know what he's talking about. He's saying, what I gave you, did you give it to somebody else? Yeah. Because I gave y'all everything I had, so you should be working in the same pattern to give somebody, to teach somebody else what you, that it be multiplied all over the place. Yeah. Then the next thing he said is, fill or replenish. Uh -huh. He said, whatever you take out, what I need, uh -huh. uh, 
Y'all remember the ice trays? <laughs> get some water out, get some ice out, put some water in the tray. You know, I'm, I'm mad your mama got caught that ice tray. You ain't crying no ice tray. <laughs> you have a duty to bless what has blessed you. And a lot of times we get blessings from places and we go, oh, they'll be all right. Mm -hmm. That's their job. Okay. And y'all know I don't hit you over the head with some of those power. Right? If you get something good here, and, you know, bless the place so that others can be blessed. Let me just take a moment to thank those of you. Some of you come and bless me individually. And I just want to say thank you for obeying God and, and being obedient to what God is telling you to do. Amen. But this goes for everybody in your life. Mm -hmm. Somebody needs to go home and call Big Mama today. Mm -hmm. What's she say? Give me my flowers, Bible. Yeah. Somebody has blessed you, and God says, put it back so that the next person might be blessed. Yeah. You see, people, you can't give from an empty well. Right. And the reason why some people aren't giving in this world is because you let the well get in. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. You didn't pour back into what has blessed you Amen. and kept you and helped you to go through. Amen. Hey man, I don't have to lie that. Right. It's okay. It's in the Bible. I'm good. <laughs> and then it says, subdue. Which means give some discipline to it. Yeah. You see, here's what we all understand. If you do all, if you do the first four, you'll be rich. We're just going to be practical. You're going to be very rich. You can do the first floor. Because, but here's what I mean. Because it works the same way with money. First of all, when you get your money, bless it. Tell it where to go. Call uh -huh. the place. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Bless it. Tell you, say, say, God, I'm thankful for this money no matter what the amount is. Now, God, the same God that can put fish and a few pieces of fish and bread together and feed 5,000 can take this $5 and make it into 5 million. Amen. See, if you're not speaking to your blessing, they don't know where to go. Amen. Y'all see, y'all not follow me. God spoke to the earth and told it what to do and it had to do it. Amen. That same God brings life into you. And if you're not speaking to the things that you have, they are going aimlessly nowhere. Amen. But if you speak to them and you speak to them in a positive way, they have to obey. The Bible says the word of God will not return void. Amen. Amen. Everything that you say has an impact. Amen. Even the little side comments, the little shady thing, Amen. all that has an impact back on your life. Amen. Just with money, you bless it, right? Yeah. Then you be fruitful with it. You learn how to make it and you invest it, right? And, and, and so, and then it begins to multiply. It's called count compounding. Where my financial people at? It's called compounding. And it doesn't matter how much you put in, it will start to compound. This just even works with the human body. I was reading something the other day that says, People who do a small workout every day get more health benefits than somebody who goes hard for a few months and then quits. Or goes hard every other day. If you just do a few things each day, the body begins to fall into the pattern. The body begins just begins to take shape on its own. Stop letting somebody, stop letting the trainer make you sore and cry. Just do enough to keep your body in shape. And then replenish it. Then replenish it. If you, if you take money out, put the money back in. Yeah. Yeah. How many of us are just a little bit out of savings? <laughs> put the money back in and then subdue. So if you've done all this, all of a sudden you find yourself a wealthy person. Or you find yourself looking really good, right? <laughs> That's where temptation comes in, right? You look good. A lot of people whistling at you down. <laughs> Your boot don't look so good because you got options. Right? <laughs> Y'all ain't never been there. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. You've been there. Got that hat in now all of a sudden. Okay. All right. Okay. You act up if you want to. <laughs> Bag up for to the left. <laughs> Now God says, now you have to subdue. Get some discipline on it. Just because just you can do it don't mean you should do it. Yeah. 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 And see, this is the 
department a lot of parents leave out with their children. You pour all this into them, you invest them, you take them to this camp and this training, and they become they become popular, they become good looking, but they are jerks and brats and they're spoiled. Why? Because they have no discipline. Just because you can do it, just because you can say something to somebody, just because you can have a smart mouth, don't mean you have the right to it. If you're smarter than the other kids in the class, don't mean that you shouldn't go and help them and help them study. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So do it. Have some discipline. God says, do this for the earth. That's what we have now. We have a society that just wants to make and consume stuff that it don't even need. We consume so much stuff that we have to buy other buildings to put stuff in Amen. that we'll never use. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Have some discipline. Give it to somebody who can use it. Amen. Bless somebody who doesn't have enough. God is doing all this so that man can be positioned to have dominion. Yeah. Because God designed us for victory, not to be victims. All right. Yes. All right. and, and if you are missing, if you constantly feel victimized, oh, the world is against me. Oh, they talking about me. That's like, I don't like to preach those sermons. I, I hate this victimization preaching that we have in our society right now where, oh, everybody out to get you and man is your enemy. No, we ain't. For we fight not against flesh and blood, but we fight against principalities and power and high and, 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 and that's because we don't use the steps to dominion like God gave us. Amen. God says, what I give to you, give it back. What I give to you, be disciplined about it. Yes, you have an anointing and a power and an authority, but that doesn't mean that you speak negative things into people's lives. Amen. Amen. There is, there, there, you, should, you are always in position to be victorious because God is with you. But this victim mentality, I don't know why this always happened to me. You should be happening to it. You shouldn't be afraid of the storm. You should say, I am the storm. Amen. Amen. I am the atmosphere changer. Amen. I am the earth shaker because God exists in me. The same power that split the sea is the same power I'm walking into this room with. And you can act crazy if you want to, but my God is with me. You are not a victim to anybody. I don't care when daddy walked out. I don't care what mama said. You have a responsibility yeah. to take dominion over the situation. Amen. Yes. Come on, man, sir. Yes. You can't live your life yeah. talking about what happened in the past. That's right. That's right. When God is blessing you right now. Yeah. 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 Yes. So then the Bible said, now, I will give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the entire earth, and every tree that has fruit in it, with a seed in it, there it will be for your food. First of all, this is a side. If a food or fruit is seedless, that means God is made. Let me tell you, last year. I had to drive about 40 miles to find a seeded watermelon. <laughs> because uh, the growers, the GMO folks, have realized that there's power in the seed. Mm. Mm. <laughs> there is power. The power ain't in the fruit. No, 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 don't worry about the fruit of life. The power is
<laughs> Later on, after the flood, God said, you may have me, but I need you to understand that was as an aside. You shouldn't have a big steak yes. and a little cup of broccoli. <laughs> you should have a big plate of broccoli and perhaps, if you need it for your protein, a little steak. Understand, there's balance here, and we got it all out of, I know we got vegetarians in here, but that's not. That's all. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And it shouldn't be a lot of fat back in the green. That's me. Y'all can take me from your neighbor. And, and, and so he says, but what God is saying is, Everything that bears a fruit with that bears fruit with the seed, you can eat. Yeah, yeah. Notice God didn't tell them he had to plant. He didn't say you have to plant the thing. God said, I, I'll place it, I'll place it where you need it. Uh -huh. If you're walking over here, I'll nurse you over there. Yes, if you go blessed in the city and blessed in the field, wherever you go. I'll provide a blessing for you. That's why when the disciples said, Act, God teaches how to pray, they said, Give us this day our daily bread. When you are really walking in the Lord, you live day to day knowing that God will give you more than enough. God said, I don't want you working for the fruit. I'll provide the fruit. You just only eat of the fruit what you need. Don't get greedy. Don't try to soar up for a rainy day. God said, I can provide for you even in the rain. I can provide for you in recession and depression. God says, you are not accountable. Y'all know what y'all said. God is trying to tell man, because it kills me. When I hear Christians go, this is just for a season. God don't want you to be seasoned. Amen. 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 See seasons here? You see where God is saying, man, when the winter comes, I can't provide for you. No. We are not a seasonal people. Amen. Jesus said, look at the birds and the lilies. They reap nor so. Yeah. We're supposed to be existing and moving and receiving God's favor at all times. Amen. Trusting him to provide for us. So he said, Those will, that will be your food. What I give you, what God is saying is, what I give you will be what you need in the moment. Yeah. I mean, just like, just like we didn't get to choose when we were growing up, what was for them? Yeah. Amen. <laughs> But mama or daddy made a, made, a, made a meal that was good to keep us. Y'all still here today to survive, right? Right, right? And you didn't have any choices. That's the thing. We want all the choices right now. We, 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 we are control freaks and we want to decide everything. And God says, no, I know you better than you know you. I designed you. He didn't say, let us, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, and, uh, and Keisha, let's, let's, let's make man. So... You weren't involved in the making, Amen. and you, 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 you don't really need to have a say. And see, that's the thing that keeps us up tonight, right? Amen. Trying to decide how we're going to provide, how are we going to give. God says, I have supplied every need according to my riches in glory. Now, I don't think get, if y'all get that verse, because that verse is saying that God's saying what I provide for you is going to be in, in accordance to my bank account. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. What you're trying to provide for you is an account in, in accordance to your bank account. Yes. Yes. I take these. Yes. I'm just saying. Yes. I know where the zeros are in my account. Yes. I'll take the both. Yes. But then he says this. He said, I give every green plant full of food. And this is he spoke to all the animals, including man. He says, I will give you every green plant for food. Why did it say green? Why, 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 why did why did uh, why did it say green? Why green? Because green means it's still living. Amen. And a living person needs living food. Amen. Amen. But it's even deeper than that because God wants you to know that only living things can give you life. Yeah. I'm talking about people. Uh, you see, uh we got a zombie apocalypse happening right now. But there's a lot of people walking around like they're living, but they're dead. Amen. And you have to be careful Amen. about taking living advice from dead people. Amen. You got to be careful 
about people who just want to go from Monday to Friday, get drunk on the weekends, and repeat it the next day. Amen. That's a dying person. Amen. Somebody who is living, who is seeking after what God has, is the person you want to be connected to. Because they will either give life Amen. or suck life. Uh -huh. And you have to decide, uh -huh. right, do you want to live? Do you want to have life and have it more abundantly? Then you got to decide where you get your nourishment Amen. from. Amen. 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 That's why Christ rose from the dead. Because he is our living source. Yes. Stop. So, so stop letting dead things give you life. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. A car's going to die one day. It can't give you life. Your house is grand as it is. It's got to crumble one day. Amen. It can't give you life. Amen. Oh, get your life from other living Amen. things. Amen. Be alive and fully alive every day. As a matter of fact, this word live, this word life or living, when Christ used it, he said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Yeah. The word life is the word zoe. And that means a full and complete life. It means a life that, yes, will have some ups, but will have some downs. If you are, if you are thinking or feeling everything has to always go my way. I have to always be right. You're dying. You're dying because you're not growing. You're not flourishing. And God is saying, no, I, I need you to embrace the life that I give you ups and downs. Why? Because it doesn't matter the ups and downs. I'm still with you. I will not depart from you. I will not let you down. I will not forsake you. So embrace this life fully and look for me in everything. Yeah. And then you'll become more and more alive. You'll become more and more like me. I'm almost done. Then the Bible says, then God saw everything that he made. I just want you to take a minute, a minute there. God steps back and he looks at him. And I don't know if y'all have done this lately. Taking a step back and look at how far you've come. You see something you haven't even told. I, I see the I see the nod. I see I, I, I see how far you've come from projects and dirt roads from uh, from and I'm even not talking about material things. From from abuse and rejection. How far you've come. Sometimes we're so hungry, we're so stretching out for the next thing. That's why the Bible says, don't be anxious for things. Because if you're anxious for things, you miss the blessing of this moment. You know, and your, your, your marriage may not be perfect right now, but you remember a time being lonely. Begging God for somebody who could share the laughter and the tears with you. If you just step back and saw that everything that God created through you. Know your kids, they may not be perfect. They may not, be, they may not have grades you can post on Facebook. <laughs> But they are yours. Amen. Yeah. They look like you. God, God loves you so much that He said, I'm going to make, bring through you something that looks like you. Yeah. What did you do to deserve that? What did you do to deserve to be caretaker of what God created? I don't care if you're a natural child, doctor child, whatever. Who are you? What makes you so great? What would even make you so great that God says, wake up? Uh -huh. mm. What did you do? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. What did you do to earn it? Mm. Can, can you just step back and look at your life and look at what God has done and not be moved? Look at what he brought you through. Because yes. there's some that started with you who aren't here today. Yes. Yes. Need God really? And God said, See, that is what I need you to do. While you step back looking at the life of what God has done through you, God is stepping back looking at you. Yeah. And he's saying, why do you hurt yourself so much? All right. Why do you put yourself down so much? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God says, don't you know that even through your ups and downs, I am looking at you the same way you look at the things that I've done through you. Amen. And God is looking at you and saying, you are very good. I'm so fond of you. I love you so much. You hurt yourself, but I love you. 
I know what you're going through. I went through it with you. And God looked at them on one accord, just wanting to be close to him. He said, very good. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody, if you don't get anything out of this sermon, understand that when God looks at you, very I am well pleased All right. with yes. you. Yes. God Thank wants you to know that you are Thank loved. You. He's pleased yes. with you. I don't usually do this. Look at your neighbor and say, you are very good. Very good. And I know for some of you, you haven't had somebody ever in your life yet. I know there's somebody here. When I was writing this last night, God said there's going to be somebody in here who nobody has ever told them <laughs> that they are good. They told them what they wouldn't be in, yes. and, and, and how messed up they were. Yes. They would be, yes. never be good for anything. It never amounts to anything. Yes. And he said, there's somebody in here, and you'll tell me after the service, but there's somebody in here that you just need to know. That wasn't your neighbor talking. That was the voice of God in the breath that breathed life, life into them, saying, you are very good. That's all I got. Thank you.
where love is received, but then also love is given out beyond that. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God's praise. Amen. Praise God. Let's uh, give God some praise again for that message of the past day. Amen. Now's the time that we all get to participate. Amen. It's time for giving. Amen. So, uh, first we're going to have some announcements. And then uh, follow the directions of the ushers and let the Lord, let the love God to give. Amen. Amen. Yeah, still good, even though we can't not hear the sound. Yeah. All right, so what I will do is I'll talk about a lot of things that was going on. First, we want to give thanks to God for what happened on yesterday uh, when we had uh, were able to come out here and hear from uh, who is Ola. Ola, Ola, Ola. Everybody, Ola, can you please stand up? Everybody give Ola a round of applause. You did a great job um, with uh, this is the realty with um, Bliss Real Realty uh, Estates. Yeah. And what she did was she provided us with opportunities to hear a lot more about ways that you can be a, a home buyer. Uh, we had testimonies of people who came out who said that they were able to hear more information about how they, they could purchase their own home, information they never knew about. And that's something that's great that we're doing here at Greater Works being able to do that in the community. So her team was able to be a part of that as well. So we give her a round of applause one more time for that. There are so many other things going on. We have Tuesday, we have Bible studies. Tuesday we have Bible studies. And we're able to learn more about God, how to have a better relationship with Christ, and how to also be able to minister to one another through the community. And one thing that we're doing right here at Greater Works is we're trying to focus a lot of our attention on not just being vessels in the building, but being vessels outside of the building. So God calls us all to do great things. And the greater works that Pastor was talking about, we want to be those vessels so God can use us. Another thing that we talked about that's very, very important. We got a chance. If everybody give a round of applause because we got a chance to collect can openers that will be able to go and help those in the families who are homeless. That's something that's made. I'm going to tell you why it's made. This is why it's so important. Sometimes we think about people are homeless and like, why are they collecting can openers? What happens is, a lot of times families who are homeless, they get the canned goods, but they have no source of opening what they get. And sometimes it's the little things that you do when you start off doing the little things, finding out what people's needs are before you even make an investment into them. So that was something that we're doing here at Greater Works, and we thank God for that. So if we can give a round of applause for that. We, we got and, oh, yes. Friendsgiving. Yes, Friendsgiving. We're honoring our veterans through Friendsgiving. And we're going to ask people to join. That will be on what day? November 24th. November 24th. So we want everybody to come out and participate. It's going to be at 1 o'clock. 
1 o'clock that Sunday, where we honor our veterans and people in the community. But also, we know that Monday is Veterans Day. So if you're a veteran, if you don't mind standing real quick so we can salute you, give me a round of applause. Thank God for all that you have done. And this one thing that we talk about, we talk about service too. You have to really serve to be in the military in any branch. To be able to give of your time and your sacrifice, the sacrifice of those who are around us. And one thing that's very important, my father was in the Air Force, but one thing he's always told me was that when you get a chance to serve, you really get to see God at work. And so for all of them who serve, we thank you for being vessels who stand in the gap for us who fight on our behalf so that we have the freedom that we have. We don't take that lightly. And as we prepare for offering, we don't take this lightly either. We don't take this lightly because it's a chance that we get to give to a God who gives to us. Like Pastor says, we get this chance to give our offering, we get to give our tithes to Him. And so we thank God for that as we go into our offering.
Jake on Fort Pontiac. Had us all to remember we were fearfully and wonderfully made in you, Lord God. You love us so much. You sent your son, Jesus Christ, down here to die on the cross for our sins, Lord. Father, we ask right now that you will bless us all for that. Your people have brought forth, Lord God. Bless each one of your persons that had to give, those who didn't have to give, and those who had to give, or may not be able to, Father God. So we just thank you and ask that you will multiply uh, what your people have brought forth, that we put forth to build up your kingdom and to bless us. We thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray for Thanksgiving. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We love you, God.